Alright, so welcome to a special freaking video. Today we're going to be talking about Lucky and why you should listen to Lucky. I've already made a part one to this video, so this is kind of a follow up. And on top of that, I feel like I have uh, some cool stuff about Lucky that I honestly don't think the casual Lucky fan even knows. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this whole video. Just before we start though, be sure to use code FRONT to get 10 to 30% off all your G Fuel purchases. I use it most of my tubs behind me and it's a steal bro you'll save a lot of money and you're goaded if you get some so let me know so in case you don't know lucky's legal name is lucky camel jr he's from chicago illinois he is currently 24 years of age his birthday is may 30th 1996 just based on google they put him under the hip-hop category of course lo-fi music experimental music cloud rap and soundcloud rap again if you're not really familiar with lucky it's really hard to explain what kind of music he makes simply because nobody makes music like him it of course falls under the hip-hop category but obviously there are subgenres, and he just doesn't fit in any of them because he his sound is just so unique which to an extent was his goal all along but we'll get to that later now lucky was very early on to social media specifically twitter he started his twitter in august 2011 to kind of get a hint as to what kind of person he was at that time i advanced searched his tweets and i pretty much just found him tweeting on new year's about some not so nice things i feel like it just comes down to him being very young so basically he was just talking about how much he hated his parents his mom specifically at first apparently she wanted to kick him out because i mean for whatever reason maybe he was just you know just being a rebellious ass kid and pretty much what he was saying is that he hated his mom and she wanted him to leave the house and go to his dad's but it was no better over there because he did not like his dad or his stepmom. He's said in interviews before that he's kind of like gotten the best of both worlds because on one side he was, you know, in the suburbs and, you know, he got to live that life and that okay. side. Did you grow up with your mom and your dad or your dad was just a... Two you, cribs. Okay. My mom kinda went one back place, and forth. my dad went one place, yeah. Okay. Because at some point, I always had the best of both worlds type shit. Yeah, 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 yeah I feel you. You see what I'm saying? So then let's talk about And I am going to assume that he lived a suburban life with his dad and then street life and stuff like that when he was with his mom, who I believe wasn't uh, financially as stable, which there's nothing wrong about that. But later on, come to find out that they're actually pretty good. So just to kind of clarify that stuff happens, you know, he's a very young kid. He was he was super young. Everybody has those phases. It is what it is. They're good now. And there's a whole video showing that, you know, they're good. I had him when I was like 19. So we kind of grew up together. And I always wanted a little brother. So I kind of used him for my little brother for a little while. But he's my baby. He's been my motivation for a long time. Now that was just 2011 going into 2012 so pretty much lucky just goes on twitter and just starts you know just being a twitter user i don't really want to explain everything that he was saying so on some screenshots you will see that his username is flawless lucky which is the one he has currently but if you advance search you'll see people tagging him and he'll be replying so clearly you could just put two and two together and yeah it, that was his first ever at that i found to date and to kind of confirm it uh he, <laughs> he tweeted out saying that he loved the username he had which i thought was really funny and shortly after new year's actually like around 2012 like january he changed his username to dirty trill n word uh don't ask me why he did that but it is what it is and then at the end of 2012 he changed his name again to chief lot of dough which fun fact i took the username i have at chief lot of dough on twitter go follow me so that's just to get all the usernames out of the way i'm not really trying to base twitter usernames on october 21st 2012 lucky releases his first ever ever song according to you know my research on twitter which happens to be a song named master plan uh produced by thelanius martin and not even joking like it's not even a bad song
and that's literally no shade like the song was actually a vibe just knowing that it's his first song that was uploaded eight years ago on a youtube channel that literally has nothing to do with lucky i'm not even sure if he owned the youtube page that it's that this song is on then again like he was a very young guy you know he probably had a different friend group at the time you know like hey i'm gonna promote this alternative chat but before i do that let me post a song on my friend's youtube channel and let's grow together toyota boys and one month later almost to the day lucky announces that untouchable lucky is coming out on twitter which if you don't know that's like kind of what everybody thinks is like his first song because it's like the first song that has a music video that's on elevator that has a certain amount of views you know you could definitely like just find that out yourself so he announces it on twitter and you know i'm not gonna lie to you lucky was a pretty smart guy at that time because the day before new year's on 2012 Lucky X goes to a listening party for, uh, I I'd assume a friend. I'm going to say Teve Baker's bakery shop listening party. He attended that. And in that video, which I will show proof, he says alternative trap in two months. So he's pretty much just doing promo in someone's listening party. Like he was on that stuff back then. <laughs> And on January 1st, 2013, Lucky drops Untouchable Lucky. He dropped it on the same page that he posted Master Plan, which was on the to Toyota Boys YouTube channel. And it was just the audio edition. And then five days later, he announces a song named Nikki Wilson, which was produced by Hippie Dream, which I thought was really cool. He dropped it on the 13th. And then on the 22nd of 2013 is the infamous, the music video to Untouchable Lucky did by Brian Zalaki. I think. And again, you can look this up on Elevator. It's currently sitting at like a quarter million views, which is like, you know, kind of crazy because that was his first ever music video. And if you listen to the song right now, it probably won't hit you the same. But at the time, bro, like that shit was crazy. Like it was just so different. And that really opened up a lot of people's like eyes to Lucky. You know, everybody was kind of like, whoa, who is this guy? And then Lucky drops a freaking other music video on Elevator, which I feel like they had a rise at the same time you know they kind of came up with each other because there were some links that don't exist anymore on elevator but i feel like you know they, they kind of had a come up at the same time which is pretty cool but on may 29 2013 lucky drops everything outside which you can still see on elevator it's currently sitting at a quarter million views as well just like any other rapper should to be honest uh you know drop some songs before pick it up when it comes to you know uh you know just having releases he already has two videos out and a couple singles which you can also include the songs that he's dropped music videos for so he has like four songs already that didn't do bad two of them like are sitting at a quarter million views maybe now but back then it was it was still getting numbers and he's already talked about alternative trap he's been teasing it basically so on july 25th of the same year 2013 he drops alternative trap which is his debut project from there count on me was the one that got the most attention i got connects almost locked up so they just filling my stock up you think i'm on a naughty list they just rocking my sock up these hypes annoying this pop up so i just dish some red x's i stay away from the coppers the lobby stalking like x's work and I'm not gonna say the whole project, but I believe most of the project was produced by Pluto Nash, which is a like a very long time friend for him. Like to this day, they're still cool. He's still like, dude, he came up with Pluto Nash, which is so lit. And on an interview, he kind of said that he was disappointed that it didn't get on the complex, like top 100, I believe. 16, Alternative Trap came out and Complex didn't put me in the top 50 at the end of the year. My heart was broke, you know? Like my heart was broke in half. Like, you feel me? Like, I was so sad. And this year, I didn't even, I wasn't even, I didn't even, not like I, I cared for it, but I wasn't even like really like expecting it. Yeah. Which is crazy because he's talking about a debut project and he also said how much it hurt him <laughs> which is crazy because like it's your debut project. Like, there's most, there's a lot of people dropping mixtape nowadays that, you know, don't exactly do too well and they just get a job or something i don't know but it didn't stop lucky on august 7 2014 lucky drops body high and funny enough he wasn't too big of a fan of the project either but he did say that it was just because like he made most of the project while he was on zans but he ended up kind of like taking his words back because the freaking project was on complex top 50 which is what i meant before on alternative trap not top 100 i'm sorry while i'm sitting in this v no listening to me though here for all uh, my damn mistakes. I didn't realize body had this so much for me. 
like I didn't realize it at first though. Like I was thinking like I was so disappointed in that mixtape. Like I was so disappointed for like, but that was just like because I made the entire mixtape just off Zan. Just, so it was just like an emotional thing too. Like I was just like I don't feel the same way about the movie that I did at the same time. When um Danny Brown told me like this is the best. Like he says top three mixtapes of this year. When I was on tour with him, Rat King had put out their album. He said Rat King was one of the best albums of the year. And Rat King, amazing to me, you know? So and he put that he put that shit on social media. Then he put that, that, that top, it was one of the top three albums of the year. For a body of work that wasn't really even appreciated by the artist himself, just says something, cause like, Body High was actually a pretty good project, bro, I'm not even gonna lie. And then kinda towards the beginning of 2015, specifically May 30th, Lucky drops X, which in my opinion is like kinda like, X I believe is where he really like, that like it really started to happen for him and i'm saying this because in that project he had low life which in my opinion is one it's like one of my favorite songs by lucky and he has the chance of rapper song stevie wonder which is an underground classic bro and fun fact if you didn't know stevie wonder was uh produced by young chop which is also the guy that like you know kind of like went crazy on instagram live all the time like really just asking to die it's sad but young chop used to be one of the like most like popping uh producers because of chief keef he was rolling with them you know chief keef was like at the peak of his freaking career and young chop was there so obviously they looked up to young chop so when they got to meet him they were geeking last year last april g me and this nigga was working we was studying y'all niggas g this shit crazy as hell does right now <laughs> That's right now, right. G. I'm talking about that. No, listen. Nah, I'm, no, 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 no
Um, these bitches thinking I'm Rick James. Um, like it's fast life, like drugs. You know, like that's my little comparison to it. And it's like I'm not idolizing him, but like, like he, like he was right. Like his letters, it was so like the way he was putting it. Like I'll be back, I'll be back. Like he put, he really put fear in their heart. It was just senseless, and it's like. That's what I'm doing. Like people, people hate me because I promote drug music. In my case, I'm saying, Sam is drugs, not like fast life. You, it's just, I mean, unfortunately, they have to be influenced. He mentioned in an interview with Lyrical Lemonade. Uh, he was a very early guy with Lyrical Lemonade. They kind of came up as well at the same time, which is pretty cool too. Vices are demons. My demons are these bitches. Me thinking I'm Rick James, just fast life, like drugs. Sam just wants me to do evil. Sam just wants me to die with the youth and drugs. So these demons that he was uh, talking about ended up forcing him to take a break from music later in the year of 2016. Which he says he was living in New York and in New York he was just going through it, just felt alone and like just depressed. So, you know, it makes sense. Just before his hiatus, he drops a project, Free Wave 2, which the cover is inspired by Nirvana, just in case you didn't know that. Now, I know I said the project came out in August, but on Chicago Sleepers, which you just definitely watched that interview, it's pretty cool. The host said that Free Wave 2 came out in October, so don't really quote me on that. There was a lot of times where I would see like different dates of when the, song, the, the project released, so. On Chicago Sleepers, Lucky mentions that he always wanted to be a kid on drugs and have that type of aesthetic, which is why I was saying that, you know, he kind of got what he asked for because he kind of like everything like and come to find out that in 2016, that's he literally says that that's kind of what he wanted to do. Because I mean, if you don't know, like he, from Alternative Trap, it really like he just he evolved over that span of time, you know, like that that was he evolved just then and there and that was just in 2016 bro and he also mentioned that he was friends with playboy cardi ian connor and through them two he met asap mob now i don't know if you knew this but lucky was in yamborghini high <laughs> Man, I'm dead. and lucky explained how that even happened so pretty much he slept over at rocky's place and they just rocky just woke him up and told him hey get ready we're gonna go shoot a music video and that was that and now don't quote me on this but i'm pretty sure he even let him borrow some clothes <laughs> like it was just super last minute as you could tell lucky was low-key shouted out by pharaoh williams and when he got shouted out like he didn't pre appreciate it at all at the time if it's not lil wayne i don't want to hear it and after his hiatus was over on may 5th 2017 lucky drops watch my back which in my opinion is like the last project before he starts going for these like it goes from watch my back to free wave three you feel me like like even lucky himself like why is he calling it a three p if he's had good music before that it's just something to it bro so lucky drops watch my back which i absolutely fell in love with bro i listened to it up until like junior year of high school now this also like kind of said it like straight like He's the underground king. There's a reason why he wanted to lay low and just do his thing in the underground scene. Lucky looked up to Mos Def, so Lucky kind of wanted to be like him, you know, kind of just dip into the mainstream and also just be an underground king. But the best part about that is, that's not even the main reason. His main reason is he was just too shy to go mainstream. And after Watch My Back, it, he went pedal to the metal for sure. And pretty much just outgrew the underground mentality in an interview. In an interview, he said he didn't want to be mainstream because he was shy, but he's ready to become a superstar. I used to think I wanted to be like most deaf, like an underground legend. That's because I was shy though. I was pretty shy. But now I want to be like a super superstar which i feel like free wave like that did it for him bro i feel like commercially it's his most successful project and he follows it up with days before three and almost there and we just got an ep if you guys have any questions leave them down in the comments below like i'm trying to like you know i definitely forgot some things probably because i didn't really write much i wanted to be it just be more about my you know my lucky like knowledge you know what i'm saying so definitely discuss with me down below if you like the video leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already man i could do more of these bro i actually enjoy doing this stuff bro you need to let me know
And on that note, I'm out of here. Peace.